Hello and welcome to a video where I'm going to briefly talk about my experience with adding roller bearings to some LEGO train wheels. Now this was done for a few reasons, first of all this is mainly a new addition to my Coronation Express set and this is mainly because of how heavy the Express is as a whole. 10 coaches is a lot for 6 motors to pull around and I know that roller bearings make things a lot easier when it comes to anything related with wheels. And I discovered this video a while back where someone was able to do a more DIY themed process for adding roller bearings to stock normal LEGO train wheels. Now this was very interesting for me because this is something I wanted to try. This is probably a cheaper way to apply roller bearings than it is to buy pre-made roller bearing wheel sets from either HA Bricks or Brick Model Railroader for example. It was a very frustrating process because I had to position the bearings into the right place on the bracket, but by the end of the day I still think it did an overall good job. The process began with me ordering 6 bags of 10 bearings and they all came together in one bag. Seeing bearings this small is quite remarkable, so for this process to be able to function in the first place is very interesting. And these were all laid out as well as some very small Technic axle rod bricks that were all cut up to have the end pieces removed. And this was probably the most lengthy part and also the most useless part. So I had a vice purchase well in advance for any potential brick modifications. I don't really like modifying or cutting bricks, but given what I need to do, following the tutorial as well, it kind of, you know, I don't really have a choice. It makes sense and it's something I'm going to have to do. But after doing this to five or six wheels, it got to a point where this particular process wasn't working. The video that I followed originally where I discovered this particular process described it as, okay, here's what you need to do. And it all sits in here and it all works nice and dandy. And it really wasn't the case. I then had to swap over from the original technique to finding older wheels where the metal axle piece itself goes through the actual wheels and that I found to be a much nicer and smoother process because the plastic on plastic rubbing against each other was causing more friction and I was also add, um, able to add some lubrication to the end of the metal pins from the wheels just to give it a bit more free rolling and this is the process that you see on screen now that I use for most of the wheels again the first six or so followed the original guide and they did still work I mean there's no need for me to go back and change them now but going forward it was still better for me to do it this way and I began my first rolling test soon after and the difference is very obvious it doesn't help having R40 corners because they are very sharp and as you saw in the video there the even with the roller bearings it's a very quick stop on those curves but now that's my main layout has R56 and R72 curves it should be a much better runner when it comes to taking my layout to shows. But yeah, the difference is night and day. It's just so cool to see that. They were both given the same gentle push, but you can tell which one has the roller bearings. And after that, I then got the full consist together and had a bit of fun of running my train around a loop. I was able to get a slightly larger loop on my floor than normal. But overall, it was a very smooth run. It's not too noticeable, but at slower speeds, I'd say that's where it's most notable, where the wheels have actually had roller bearings applied to them. But at the same time, this was another fun excuse to get the trains out and have some fun. And it's still an overall successful process. However, this is where things get a bit interesting, because this is not where I'm going to say I recommend you doing this because it was an all day process, especially with the amount of wheels I had to do this to. And it was again infuriating. There were times where the wheels got stiffer with the roller bearings applied to them instead of actually being more free rolling. I couldn't find out what the exact issue is because it, it just doesn't make sense why it got stiffer. I'm not going to try and go on a lecture and explain why certain things worked where other things didn't, but Again, this is a very hackneyed DIY process, and it's not something that I encourage. The reason why proper bearing wheel sets exist from Big, uh, Brick Model Railroader and HA Bricks is because they are properly refined. And if you want to get roller bearing wheels, I strongly encourage you buy them instead. It's going to be more expensive, 
but they are much more proper with what they offer. And I think in the future, if I am going to get more roller bearings for wheels, that is the process I'm going to go down as well. But overall, this was a very interesting day, and I'm actually quite glad that these wheels have now got roller bearings added to them, because it makes for a much nicer run. And when it comes to running my Coronation Express, it will be a much smoother ride. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so much for your time. Be sure to check out the community tab for polls and updates. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.